Hello and welcome to another AIC video. Doing a follow-up video on my 8-inch uh, AliExpress uh, notebook, touchscreen, tablet thingy. Uh, I've had a lot of the same questions kind of over and over again uh, for the system, so I want to do a quick video and run through as many of those questions as I can. So when people keep asking me <laughs> the same questions, I can respond to those by simply linking to the video. Anyways, first things first, um, and probably the thing that's going to get people to move away from this uh, video very quickly is uh, drivers. Um, I did put the drivers on my blog. It's aroundincircles.net. Again, aroundincircles.net. Bring that up here so you can see it. And right here we have, I've, I've had on here for quite a while, Compact V2000 drivers, um, but I've also went ahead and added the AliExpress laptop drivers. Um, link is right there. Um, I also have a link to my support page. Um, it has cost me money. Um, I'm not making anything off my YouTube channel, literally nothing. Um, so all these videos cost me more than I make by a lot. So if you could support me in that, I'd appreciate it. So. That's my spiel, you know, subscribe, comment, whatever, all that BS that they tell you to do. Okay, question number two that I get a lot, asked a lot of is pen inputs. Um, I'm not a touchscreen person, so I don't have a lot of touchscreen input things. So this is from a laptop that I got from Lenovo to do a review on that I've never done. I just need to go ahead and send it back to them. It's from a ThinkBook and it... It does nothing. Um, I don't know if this needs to be synced in some way or have specific drivers or something, but as far as this goes, it works not at all. It works great on the ThinkBook, so there's that. Um, this is just one of those things that like mimics your finger. So it, it, you know, it's just touching it with your finger, just less greasy if you're like me. All right, next thing to go through is battery life. So I'll just talk about this one. Um, I ran Cinebench, uh, I'll bring that up here, see if it even tells me what score I got um, while I was running it. I ran Cinebench and Fuhrmark at the same time. Uh, Cinebench, obviously, I had to keep restarting over and over again, uh, where Fuhrmark I just had running in the background. Um, and uh, I got a score of 892 on Cinebench. Um, I got, I got uh, battery life um, was a solid two and a half hours to go from 100% to 20%. At 20%, the battery savings automatically kicked in, um, and so I didn't go any further than that. Um, so yeah, 100% to 20%, um, two and a half hours running both Fuhrmark and Cinebench, maxing out the CPU and the GPU. Um, in fact, let me go ahead and actually start Cinebench to talk about the next thing. If I go back here and reopen that, I meant to do that, sorry. Uh, Cinebench, get it going here. Go ahead and start that. Now, another thing that I've been asked a lot about is fan noise. So make sure we have the CPU pegged. So yeah, CPU is pegged, right? Oh, hit the camera. I don't know how much that's even being picked up by the camera, but it is very quiet. Almost no fan noise. Honestly, if it's only a six watt CPU, like nothing, um, I wouldn't actually mind some more fan noise if they could ramp up the wattage a little bit but it maybe even double it to 12 watts and make this spin a little bit faster a little more noise output to give better performance it never got over like 62 63 degrees celsius so there's plenty of temperature headroom in there um but you know obviously it's quite slow all right so the next thing that i have been asked a lot about are the technical specs so let's go ahead we'll just zoom in here so you can see this up close and personal. So we do have an Intel N100 Alder Lake uh, on a 
FC BGA, so you know, solder to the system board. Um, if we go to main board, just generic information here, default string, default string, you know, um, it is running America Mega Trends. You can see that when you reboot it. Um, Memory is kind of interesting. It must have three uh, soldered um, chiplets on here because uh, if we go to SPD, um, each slot has three gigabytes to total 12. Um, if you go back to memory, it is running in dual channel. So uh, there is that. Uh, graphics is just uh, Intel UHD graphics. Um, nothing to write home about, nothing spectacular. I did post my gaming video on here. Unless you're really running some low-end stuff on here, it's not necessarily what I would use it for. All right, so one thing on here for mine specifically that um, I've tried Windows 10, Windows 11, I've tried reinstalling all the drivers. Um, but I've noticed there's a problem with mine, and I don't know if other people are going to have this same problem. Oh. My accelerometer, which controls the screen rotation, I'm sure, it is not recognized. So I think I have a faulty device here because of that, and it's really annoying. So it always wants the screen to be sideways, and there's not a whole lot I can do about that. I fight that quite often. I don't know if other people have that same problem. It'd be nice if you told me if you did and didn't what kind of experience you have. Um, we'll go over that here when I show you Linux in a minute. Uh, I've been asked about a um, portable USB-C uh, monitor. I don't own one. I just don't. And so I can't tell you if it works or not. Um, my monitor also doesn't support USB-C. Um, however, I have used a USB-C dock um, that does display port and it works fine. Um, so I've also plugged it into my work uh, setup just to see if the keyboard mount, yeah, it all works fine out of the USB-C. Um, I've been asked about the SSD size. It is a 2242, which is pretty standard size there. Um, I've been asked about it being a KVM system. Uh, KVM, uh, keyboard, video, mouse, uh, I believe that's what it stands for. You, you can use this to access other systems. You'll use this as a keyboard, video, mouse for other systems. I honestly don't know how that works uh, with this system. It You have to power it on, right? So you can have a monitor but then you're booting into an OS. There's no alternative OS on here that works outside of like, you know, the OS you have installed to the drive. So I'm, I'm really not sure what that is. I did see it advertised on their thing. I'm thinking um, this does have the ethernet port here on the back. I'm thinking they just mean for like consoling into systems. Like if you have a, a Dell with iDRAC or an HP with iLo or like a Cisco for iOS, whatever, you can plug a patch cable in there um, and console in um, is my thought with that is what they're referring to. I might be wrong, but then you're just using putty or whatever. And if that system's connected to a network, then, you know, it uh, doesn't really matter. All right. Um, so let me ask about video editing on here. <laughs> there is no way. No way on God's green earth would I try to edit video on this laptop. It is, it is, it, it would be impossible. It would be such a, an effort and futility. Um, I posted yesterday a video, and I don't know when this is going to come out, but uh, of a new, new to me, um, third generation i5 uh, 2012 MacBook Pro 13 inch that I paid a hundred bucks for that system will outperform this system for video editing bar none. It was a hundred bucks. It's a MacBook. You install windows on there if you want to, uh, you know, it just doesn't even begin to make sense to try, uh, to edit videos on this. This is not what you want to use this for Buy buy used ThinkPad, uh, or elite book or, 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 um, what is it, uh, Dell's Latitude line or whatever it is, Precision, Dell Precision line. If I use one of those, you can have such a better experience, uh, especially for that 300 bucks or whatever that this costs. 
You can find one with like a eighth gen Core i5, even a ninth gen Core i5, maybe a Core 7 if you really shop around on eBay, and it will perform so much better. It's not even a joke. Um, and the last thing I wanted to show on here, so I'm going through my notes over here on the side. I have my X31 I've been using to uh, to keep notes on. I love this thing. It's amazing. But anyways, different different system. Um, I'm going to grab a USB drive that I have set up for some Linux. So I'll be right back. All right, so I grabbed my USB drive that I threw uh, Linux Mint on here. Now, why Linux Mint? Because I've tried a couple different Linux versions, and so far it's the only one that boots and gives me a screen. I don't know if any of the other ones are just not um, booting correctly, uh, if there's like a software driver problem, but uh, what's happening is they are not um, booting to... Um, booting to anything that I can see on the screen, and even with an external monitor. So I did try, oh, did I not get that in time? Uh, so I tried Linux Mint and it did boot, but I'll talk about some of the issues that we're having with that. Oh, and I just booted right into Windows, uh, sorry. See, this is what I get every time is it just, um, it's sideways and there's no way for me to rotate the screen here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to boot option one. It's currently on the King Dane. I'll change that to this one. Save and exit, yes. All right, we're gonna start Linux. Let me turn this so you can maybe see it. Start Linux Mint, um, enter. And we're just gonna boot from the USB drive. Um, we're not going to install it and unfortunately i did grab a usb 2 drive so this is taking a minute um so the screen is sideways like i was saying um touch screen obviously works because that's what i'm using it's easier to do touch screen um when it's sideways we go to display um it shows that it's still landscape but if i try to change it to portrait and hit apply um it stays on landscape uh i can't figure out a way to rotate the screen um so that's no good and then drivers if i go to network um it's showing wired or a network proxy i could go ahead and plug this in and see if it'll install any drivers but out of the box there's no drivers so unless you have access to um, a wired network connection of some kind it's not going to uh, it's not going to work um, so I can't install anything I can't um, not a whole lot I can do honestly at this point so uh, I don't know if I would try Linux on here unless you're really wanting to hunt down uh, drivers for this uh, system all right I'm using the mouse is pointless I'll go ahead and restart Out the USB drive and we'll get into the windows here in just a second. Let me pause and we'll be right back. All right, so we are back in Windows, and the last thing I want to talk about is the different chargers. So let me bring this over. We have three different, technically four different types of chargers here. This white one is the charger that it came with. This box here is my Nintendo Switch charger. And then plugged in that you can't really see is the charger from a Lenovo that does USB-C. And so, let me see the side. This white cable with the metal end is the charger it came with. You see the red light comes on, it is now charging. Then unplug that, Charge light goes off. Then if we grab this, it says Nintendo right there. Red light comes on and it is now charging. So it's plugged in. Grab the this is the Lenovo, you can tell, because it has that yellow end on there. And that, and we get a red light and it is now charging. Uh, the things that do not work is 
this uh, purple cable. Tell that's a little purple. Um, that's just plugged into the um, surge protector directly, and it does not work. So plugging directly into the surge protector does not work. I've also tried uh, this with the cable that comes from them directly. So the one with the um, metal end, I've unplugged it from this box here and plugged it into this, not this one specifically because this is not plugged in the wall but over by my desk. <laughs> uh, but this one is exactly like this above at the same time. So I know it's the same thing. Um, I tried this USB-C and it also does not charge this laptop. Even powered off, just plugged in, left overnight, did not charge this laptop at all. So um, there are different chargers that can charge this laptop. I have a feeling it's anything that supports up to 65 watt charging. I think this only does uh, five watts. Um, like, yeah. USB-C output five, it's really hard to see because it's all white, but it's five volts DC, three amps max. So um, this isn't putting out enough juice, whereas this, read this here, um, USB-C um, five volts, three volts, and 12 volts. Uh, 15 volts, 20 volts, and 30 watt max so this is a 30 watt max um, charger um, and that might be what it needs it just needs 30 watts so I'm not an electrician I'm just what about this one what does it say on here just for the switch 39 watts so this is a 39 watt charger so yeah I think you probably have to have a minimum wattage on there and 5 volts is does this have maximum watts no so i just don't think these put out enough power to charge this system the uh, system recognizes it as not being able to charge it so anywho uh there's all the questions i know i went through them very quickly um if you have any further questions that weren't answered in this feel free to comment in this comment section down below i'll do my best to answer uh thank you for watching and i hope you have an amazing day